welcome to the all-time stories channel. The Praetorians were the most elite military formations in ancient Rome. They were the personal guards of the emperor himself, which were supposed to monitor his safety. Of all the Roman armed forces, only the Praetorians were allowed to be in arms inside the Eternal City. But at some point everything turned upside down. The Praetorian guards began to kill emperors and choose new ones they liked. Sometimes they even held auctions for the title of Roman ruler and gave it to the candidate with the most money. In this issue we will find out how the Praetorian Guards arose, how it gained such power into its hands and how its short but colorful history ended. Praetorians first appeared during the Republic, in 275 BC. This term denoted the personal guard of commanders from the Scipio family. However, not only the Scipios were distinguished by having their guards, similar connections were found among both Roman generals and high dignitaries, and during the late Republic, only a rare influential Roman did without such accompaniment. This was especially true during hostilities when the enemy often launched forays to kill the enemy commander. The latter had to surround himself with experienced and loyal warriors, who sometimes even spent the night in his tent which in this situation was called the Praetorium. In battle these soldiers were usually used only as a last reserve. But in our familiar form, the Praetorian guards were created only during the time of Octavian Augustus, the first Roman emperor. Augustus creates nine Praetorian cohorts, each numbering 1,000 people. Their task was to ensure security in the Roman capital. A distinctive feature of the first Praetorians was that, Although they had the right to carry weapons in the Eternal City, they nevertheless could not wear armor and were forced to wear ordinary clothes of special colors. Only ethnic Italians between the ages of 15 and 32 could be Praetorians, while in regular legions the conscription age ranged from 18 to 23. To join the ranks of the guards, it was also necessary to have good physical form, high moral qualities and come from a noble family. But since the Praetorian Guard established itself at the very beginning as the most elite unit of the Roman army, those wishing to join its ranks, no matter how ideal they were, could not do it without patronage from above. In addition being in the Guard opened up great prospects for the soldier. In particular promotion among Praetorians was much faster than among legionnaires, and those who were especially successful could rise to the rank of principal or even centurion. Also Praetorians received a significantly higher salary and had a shorter service life compared to the same legionnaires. And the guards were subordinate directly to the Praetorian Prefect or Prefect Praetorius, who in turn followed only the decree of the Emperor himself. Another privilege of the Praetorians was that each cohort had its emblem in the manner of a legion, as well as combat equipment, which consisted of more durable and high-quality armor. In addition to overseeing security in Rome and guarding the emperor, the Praetorians also carried out special operations of sorts, which included secret missions, arrests of prominent Romans and even executions, when a ruler left the Eternal City. The Praetorian Guard often accompanied and protected him along the way. This position of the guards gave them enormous opportunities, which the Praetorians did not disdain at all. If at first the guards honestly fulfilled its obligations and even fought on, a par with ordinary legions during the wars with the Germanic and Lyrian tribes, then already in 37, the Praetorians for the first time intervened in issues of succession to the throne and promoted their friendly Caligula to the throne, who as a sign of gratitude increased the number of the guard to 12 cohorts. However, just a few years later in 41, the Praetorians took an active part in the conspiracy against Caligula. As a result the Emperor dies at the hands of his guards, and the Senate again declares Rome a Republic. This could certainly lead to the dissolution of the Praetorians themselves. Anticipating their imminent end, the guards descended to ordinary looting and robbery, taking up the plunder of Caligula's former palace, in which they were incredibly lucky to find Claudius. Caligula's uncle, frightened and hiding from them. As a result of short negotiations, the Praetorians decide to make Claudius their protege and proclaim him emperor. Rome remains an empire, 
and each of the Praetorians receives an impressive reward from the newly elected emperor. The year 69 becomes extremely turbulent for the guard. The Praetorians sell the then-emperor Nero and go over to the side of his opponent Galba, who however soon refuses to pay his obligations, which forces the guard to act against him, supporting Aten, who becomes the new ruler, giving Galba to be torn to pieces by the Praetorian cohorts. Thus within a short period, with the help of the Praetorians, three emperors change at once, subsequently with the direct intervention of the guard. Almost every emperor is confirmed and removed. In particular, in 96 the Praetorians brought Trajan to power. In 192 they killed Komodo and the next year they put the title of emperor up for auction, selling it to the little-known but rich Didio Julian. The Senate which did not have its own troops, was forced to meekly endure any antics of the unbridled guard. This situation continued until the advent of Septinius Severus, who went to war against the Purchas Emperor, supported by the legions. The North besieged Rome without any problems and lured the Praetorians to his side. But this was the main deception. Having subsequently become emperor, Septinius Severa disbanded the old guards and recruited a new guards, consisting of veterans of the legions entrusted to him. Having recently been simple legionnaires who came from different nations, the new Praetorians destroyed not only the elite component of the guard, according to which only children of influential parents could join it, but also abolished the mono-ethnicity of this structure. Unlike many of his predecessors, the Severus did not like metropolitan life and preferred to be near the theaters of war of its legions. Therefore under him the renewed Praetorians also wandered throughout all the borders of the vast empire, participating in wars and protecting their ruler. The influence of the Praetorian Guard gradually faded away. They also managed to remove Emperor Heliogabala and replace him with Alexander Severus, but later the Guard Prefect Praetorius began to increasingly resemble ceremonial and administrative structures that no longer had their own will and could not resist the will of their Emperor. Finally in 312, at a time when the Roman Empire plunged into the abyss of strife, and as many as five emperors acted in different parts of it. The Praetorian Guard met its inglorious end. Speaking on the side of the capital's Emperor Maxentius, he suffered a crushing defeat in the Battle of the Mildian Bridge from the troops of Constantine the Great, who later became the sole emperor, abolished the Praetorian Guard and made Rome a Christian state. Constantine went down in history as an equal to the Apostle Saint, but the Praetorians became the personification of infidelity and dishonor, intrigue and rebellion, conspiracies and murders, forever covering their name with shame. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Subscribe to the channel and good luck.